I'm about to speak to Asma Khan, who is the founder of Darjeeling Express, um, an amazing chef, an amazing woman. You can find her restaurant just off Carnaby Street in London. But there is something about Asma that every time I speak to her, I learn something more about myself, an incredibly spiritual woman, um, but also someone who can see business very, very clearly. Um, I cannot wait for this conversation. I know we're going to tackle the hospitality industry, what's going to happen in the future, how she's tackling it, what she's doing with her staff and how she's no doubt is caring for them. Um, and this one I'm very much looking forward to and I know I'm potentially going to be extremely hungry afterwards. Hi, this is Asma Khan uh, of Dajini Express. I'm looking forward to my conversation with Holly Tucker, uh, really discussing how the pandemic has uh, impacted my business, but also the impact it has had uh, on me personally. So I hope you will enjoy listening to our conversation. Hi, Asma. Hi. How are you? I'm very excited. Nice to see you, even though it is virtually. I just, before we get into business, I just wanted to ask between, between us and everyone watching, how have you, um, before we get into the sort of the hospitality industry, but how have you personally found this time? The, the difficulty was the build up to deciding to close. Yeah. And I closed on the 17th of March. The lockdown was called a week later. And that decision was before the government had said any help or any aid, any following of staff. I decided that I could not let my staff serve, you know, 200 people up close. Uh, mm -hmm. That Saturday uh, before uh, we were rammed and it was one of those frantic services. And I sat there and I thought, you know, do I need to know that I'm financially secure or do I need to know that 25 people will go back to their family, not infect their family? Because my, you know, like a lot of immigrants, you know, this each worker of mine is sending back almost the entire wages to 15, 20 people. Um, so I thought, I thought, no, I'm going to close. And I told everybody, I'm going to pay everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to close. And once I made that decision, uh, I felt relieved. And I just thought, I am due financially, but I'll go home. And I can hug my children knowing that I did the right thing. Because these 25 yeah. people are going to be able to embrace their family in, and you know, make it through. How have you managed, from that moment you decided, and we'll get on to staffing in a minute, but how have you managed um, to keep your business going in this time? Because you, know, you have a phenomenal brand, um, yes. but it's, it's been challenging for everyone. But I can imagine in the hospitality industry, well, it's nothing like it. I think still none of us really realized that, uh, you know, it's going to be a long time before we're back. And, you know, I, I only discovered later, uh, very recently, that something I did when I left my restaurant, uh, ironically, it was actually the third anniversary of the day I'd signed the lease. Mm. I, left, I left a light on because that light was my hope. Uh, there's an Urdu word called Ummi, which is the hope that I will return. And someone told me that they often do this on stage uh, when the show is over. They leave a light on on the stage in the hope that they will return. And I left a light on uh, thinking, you know, I will be back. We'll all be back. This place will be again full of music and buzz and, you know, the sound of cutlery. And I left feeling, you know, that light is there so that I can find everything when I come back easily. Not oh, another thing. That's just made me completely emotional <laughs> last time I cried on you as well. But I think you have just a really beautiful way of spiritually putting things because, and yeah. I think it's for all of us when we hear you say that, I think, you know, that is such a wise words. Um, tell me um, about how then you have now looked at sort of your industry because you know, forever, you know, I, I'm certainly a massive campaigner, as you know, about small businesses and independence yeah. and everything like that. Have you got now a view on the way that, and you're, you're a small business, you know, have you got a view of the way things might change in your industry because of this, you know, pros and cons? The thing is that I, let me talk about the pros first, because I think that, you know, the cons are quite obvious. Uh, it's devastation financially. Yeah. But the, the pros are that I think that uh, I hope 
that people come back with the ethos of service paramount. Uh, exactly. I've, I've been very disheartened uh, with the stories just after, before the lockdown of, of very prominent, uh, very powerful figures in the industry who sacked almost their entire staff. Didn't put them on furlough, sacked them unceremoniously. I hope that all of us who will then return to restaurants will go to those restaurants that showed compassion, that showed mm -hmm. leadership, mm -hmm. that showed kindness, and that also stayed true to their staff. And well, not everybody can do what I did. I put my entire life savings back into my business so that I could pay everybody. Of course, the government has been great and paid for till end of yeah. June. I don't know whether yeah. it extended, but I didn't know that when I closed. So I, I transferred the money and I knew I had it in my account and I could then pay off everybody. And I think that for me, this is the, the pro is that please come back to those restaurants that showed the way in the way that they treated that staff because there's, th that is the kitchen where there is no bullying. That is the kitchen where labor is honored and where someone's status, uh, you know, whether your English is good or not, irrespective of the background you're from, whether you're an immigrant or you're not, you are honored to, and I think that that's the good part that I hope that the industry and our customs owners will actually reward those. The disadvantage of course is that, you know, we're, there is an expectation. I'm, I don't know whether the government will actually talk about uh, restaurants on Sunday. There's an expectation because this is what's happening around the world. You watch what they're doing. Social distancing will be a nightmare because mm -hmm. for a small business, it is like telling you, you operate with, you know, everything half. So yeah. you, 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 you cannot, absolutely cannot earn more than half your, your expected mm -hmm. you know, turnover. That's devastating because for us in restaurants, and, I'm, and I know this is with small, small business everywhere, uh, we run on very small margins. Till you make it, you fake it, essentially. And you, know, you fake it by very slim margins, staying positive, the passion driving you through, you know, not your bank balance. It also requires us to be very prudent because we need to be safe for our own team, but also people will not come back to restaurants unless they can see you visibly making, uh, you know, attempts changes. to- Changes. Yeah, changes. So they yeah. want to make sure that it's hygienic. Well, and absolutely, I wouldn't go to a restaurant where, you know, all the tables are crammed next to each other. You know, people are not without masks, without gloves. Uh, you know, there's not enough sanitization uh, available yeah. uh, for you to sanitize your hands when you come in, you know, hand washing, all of that, that the kitchen is not cramped with people. Now that is a huge problem because of the kinds of rent that we pay. Well, I, I know I've been to your place and I remember the stories and anyone who's not listened to the podcast, it's so worth a listen to hear what Asma did to get into that place to start with. Um, I want to just ask a couple of questions from the community. Um, I run a restaurant and have been closed since we went into lockdown. We're usually such a tight knit team, but obviously we're not seeing each other at the moment. How are you ensuring your team still feels part of your team whilst you're closed? That's a really good question. So you yeah. know, we, we, had, uh, we had the normal WhatsApp group, uh, but what I did is that I, I, I've, I've combined the, 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 the two WhatsApp groups that I had uh, and we, we sent uh, messages to each other uh, too many really bad jokes I get. Uh, this is like the really awful thing. I've realized that, uh, not everybody has a good sense of humor, but it's fine. Uh, and uh, so I, I get a lot of that. I talk to everybody every day. And then what I did is that the, after the first two weeks, I could sense people were grieving. So what I did is I managed to find, which was a nightmare, I managed to find delivery slots uh, in, for everybody. And I sent them gifts, groceries. Uh, of, of things that I, I know they like. Some of it is like really crazy stuff, you know, that, you know, biscuits and chocolates. And, you know, I discovered, you know, online uh, small, uh, like a small egg farm. Uh, you, minimum that you could order was 90 eggs. And I sent 90 eggs to everyone, you know, and so everyone is sharing pictures of omelets yeah. that you made. What, what do you think about this sort of change? Because as you said, I, I feel like I want to almost create a sticker that goes in everyone's window that says, we cared for our staff during this, you know? Yeah. And actually customers, 
it's very difficult, isn't it, for customers to get under the hood of really what goes on. There's so much um, facade that goes on, isn't there, where big businesses pretend to be small. There's chains that you don't really understand if they're owned. What, what's your take on this? Do you think that customers will now search out for the good people and understand business in a different way? I hope so, because, you know, I think that uh, in some ways, you know, the world stopped uh, mm. with the lockdown. Yeah. And, you know, and in our lifetime, we saw the earth recover. This is such an important lesson that when you take away all the, the pollution and, you know, the, and especially, you know, in, in a place like India, uh, you know, from my hometown, you can see mountain ranges that no one has seen. You know, my grandparents would talk about seeing it. And now people are seeing it. And I think that I hope all of this is sinking through because you're watching the purity in the earth, in the air. In, and I hope that also happens with business. I hope that this, this lockdown will give people that choice because now people will have a lot less money to spend. I think we are in trouble because I think economically people are going to be very careful uh, and huge amounts of companies are going to come back and try and tighten you know, the belts. Yes. And this will you know, invariably mean you know, less money for people who they're, working, who they're working for. So I think that the big thing is that you know, if I had just a pound to spend, I would go and spend it somewhere where it was meaningful. Yes. I have a much uh, now nuanced appreciation. I still bought from you know, companies who delivered, whose policy was not ethical, but because it was convenient, I was not willing to look at alternatives. Now I sit back and I try and find alternatives so that mm -hmm. I know that this will be delivered by somebody who is being paid a decent wage, who's not mm -hmm. being exploited, who feels valued. Because I, I feel that those companies that value their, their workforce probably values my money more. And yes. it matters to me. I'd rather give it to someone who will you know, appreciate me and then appreciate the people who work for that money that I've given them. If you did um, look into the future, what advice would you give for small businesses at the moment within your industry? I think the biggest thing is that this is not how, you know, this is an opportunity for you to reboot. You know, just like all of us have had to, if a couple of slaps doesn't work it, you put your printer on and off yeah. and then it works. <laughs> and so the thing is that, you know, and then it works. It works perfectly. Imagine that that's happening to you. You mm. have had a chance to be switched off. Use mm. this time. Use this time to plan, to conquer the world, to be the best in what you can be. You know, for me, I was just so busy uh, working for the last three and a half years. I'm very conscious of the fact that, you know, I'm not taking care of myself, you know, and my body, and I need to do more, whatever. I'm not stuck with my super fit 20 year old and I'm boxing. I'm training to box with him and I'm finally, finally using the cycle I never used. And the thing is that, you know, because mm -hmm. I never had time for things, I'm now doing things. I might come back and do it once I start working again. So, you know, all the things that you thought you never had time for, try it, you know, strengthen your soul and your backbone. You'll need these both when you start again. I've actually said, we won't be the same on purpose because I don't think you can go through something like this yeah. and just say, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to crack on as I was um, and it be progressive or in tune with the society that we're going to live in. I'm writing a lot of poetry, uh, which uh, I, I stopped writing a long time ago. My father, my parents are in India in a lockdown and my father is uh, suddenly for some very sleepless, I mean, it must be age, uh, is awake a lot. And uh, so there are long conversations at night now between my father and me because I'm the only child who's awake because of the time difference. Uh, and the other two are sleeping, which, you know, my father should also be sleeping. And he reminded me of the kind of great love I had for poetry. And I had stopped reading and because my life was so busy. And, and then I, I remembered that I used to write too. So I'm writing and I'm enjoying this so much. Uh, I mean, the poetry is not something that I ever would, would let, even let, I haven't let my, even my kids read it. 
but for me it's given it's uh it's allowed me to 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 express pain mm. grief uh failure and uh things that you know have happened and i've moved on but i wanted to to write about those as well because i moved on because uh i mean without sign i mean success just came and swept me away in some ways yeah. i had yeah. netflix the restaurant was a huge success the cookbook is a huge success of all of which i'm really grateful but somewhere in there i may have lost myself uh in in just trying to kind of uh get everything going and you know the one thing that i kept with me is the need to be compassionate the need to lead uh with kindness these two things are very important uh but i think that i i recently lost a very close friend who's my age and she didn't die of covid but she died of cancer uh you know so i'm grieving and i realized that you know i i also need to there is there is also a person in there who's not a restaurant who's not a cook who's not the chef on netflix uh who's just asma and mm-hmm. uh, and i i and and that person uh, i'm writing poetry and <laughs> i'm also trying to uh to learn um uh, arabic uh, which you know i i i knew and i had forgotten so i'm i'm doing the things that you you're know you're doing those things um but there is a kindness that we have to give ourselves and me, and certainly for me that's been a lesson out of these seven weeks for me and it's yeah. one that you're giving everyone what do you feel now as a do you feel more courageous in this do you feel that actually you've healed a bit i know that i know a lot of people in that sort of week 5 and 6 started to they taken that breath and they sort of now understood who they were in this situation yeah. and then they could almost go to the next stage i think that the thing that i discovered is that uh i have had to give a lot and do a lot uh and actually i was quite empty inside mm-hmm. i had followed out from just giving and building things and you know supporting my team and doing this book and doing the film and all of this and you know uh and so much more is coming in front of me which is all great and brilliant and very exciting and uh you know it's all kinds of things that i really wanted to do uh and exactly the stuff that i wanted to do i'm you know i'm planning writing for working with other people collaborating with them but uh you know i i think that i i i i have to learn to love myself I think I forgot. Uh I don't know when. But at some point along the way I I I think I left myself in trying to uh achieve so much. Uh because the good thing about the pandemic is that the shock of what happened also made me realize that you know I had I was so hollow inside as well that you know and now this long poetry sessions with my father with abba listening to music again you know the music that uh you know i know the restaurant play hit playlist by heart it's all my favorite songs but they no longer stayed my they became my restaurant yeah. the restaurant songs yeah yeah and 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 everything that was mine and so personal became the restaurant and became the cookbook and became netflix everything became of me became something else and i don't know where i went and so this has been quite good for me i i i'm starting to write and i'm you know writing a a a cookbook which i'm enjoying so much uh, mm-hmm. i'm loving it and i'm i'm writing the recipes uh not everything is working out right now and you know i'm blaming the the fact that all my pans are not perfect <laughs> I would love to be in your kitchen. Um I just really thank you so so much for I uh, you can see from all the comments you've really yes. touched people's hearts. Thank you so much as ever for all your kindness and what you give to us all. Um and I'm sending you the biggest virtual cuddle. Thank you Holly. Take care. Lots of love. Lots of love Asma. Take care. just an amazing woman i just you know as i say if you haven't listened to her podcast i was in pieces during it in summary you know when she just talked about keeping the light on her restaurant you know the symbolic nature of that 
I just, it spoke volumes to me. Um, people will return to business that show compassion, leadership, staying true to their staff. We will need to reward those restaurants on the other side. I mean, I just cannot agree more. Keep your team connected. WhatsApp groups, show them love. Um, the world stopped with lockdown and we saw the earth recover um, in our lifetime. I love what she said there. I had never thought of it. Did you ever think that we would see really the world recover in our lifetime or was this a pipe dream um when the pollution lifted it it forced us to see the mountains that we never saw um and we hope that this applies to businesses lockdown will give people choices and we hope that people will spend their pound where it is meaningful um put people who value their workforces and people who value their money this is an opportunity for you to reboot i love asthma saying that the rebooting of our businesses just like the printer when we can't make it work everyone says what do they say turn it off turn it off we turn it off and funny enough it works um imagine what happening to you see this time to plan and conquer the world reboot yourself as well do you know who you are or have you lost yourself to your business. Um, make sure as a founder, you use the time to find your passions, top up, refuel, poetry, cooking. Asma's doing boxing. She never thought she would do that. And it's so good for your soul. Um, I just, yeah, what a moment, what a lady. As ever, NatWest 3, Royal Mail and Dell, thank you for letting me have these conversations with these amazing founders, this amazing community. Lots of love to you all.